Hello, I hope you're okay. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. Today I'm going to be covering the case of Megan Newton. When researching this case, I just could not believe it. And it's one of them cases where I wanted to cover it mainly to just raise awareness because it's one of them things that you think will never happen, but it did in the most horrific way. And I just, I had to share this case. I actually have no intro. I'm just going to get straight into the video. Um, I just want to say though, with the hair care, um, I'm running out of products anyway, so I need to buy some more. And when I buy some more, I'll do the whole video on it, but yeah. Megan Newton was born around 2002 to her parents, Sarah and Michael Newton, which is really weird because my parents are called Michael and Sarah, which just kind of freaked me out. I couldn't find much on her family life or just life generally growing up. She grew up in Stoke-on-Trent. She was always into her sports and was so passionate about it. She played in her school's football team and then that led to her joining the under-18 Stoke-on-Trent female football team. And then on the side, she also coached at under sevens football team. She even went out of her own way in her own spare time to raise money for this football team to get better equipment and better kits, which is just so sweet. Like no one asked her to do that, but she did anyway. She had so many dreams and she was just driven by her passion for football and everything in her life just revolved around sports and football. She was so ambitious. She wanted to be the first person in her family to go to university, but her dreams didn't even stop at university. She wanted to go to America and get a full scholarship so she could study to be a sports therapist or a physiotherapist. But in the meantime, she got a job at the fish and chip shop because she was 18, she had stuff she wanted to pay for. She lived in her own apartment, so obviously she had to make ends meet. As you can probably tell, she was just so kind-hearted, she was so sweet, and she constantly went out of her way to help people, and you'll see that throughout the case. I just get the vibes that Megan was like the mom of the friendship group, like she just took care of everyone, she put everyone's needs before her, like she just seemed so sweet. On the 20th of April 2020, Megan and her friends made arrangements to go out drinking that night. Megan had work that night, but she still wanted to go, so she finished her shift at the fish and chip shop around 10.20, 10.30, she rushed home to do like her hair, her makeup, get her outfit ready. And then once she was ready, she rushed back out to go meet her friends. My throat's getting so dry already. They started at a pub around 11 o'clock. They were gonna pre-drink there. And then later that night, they were gonna head to a nightclub in Newcastle, which is like a 15 minute drive away. Megan had a really good time partying with her girls. She stayed until the nightclub closed, which was about half three. And then they decided to call it a night and like head home. And Megan and her friends headed to a taxi rank to go and get a taxi home. But everyone who had been out that night or in the same club were all hanging around the same bit. They all wanted to go home. This is where Megan bumped into someone she recognised. It was 19 year old Joseph Trevor. They knew each other from school. And you know when you bump into people from school, you do the whole catch up thing where it's like, how's life? What are you doing now? Basically, they had that. And Joseph told Megan that he's now a semi-professional football player. He's speaking to the girl whose life revolves around football. They had it so much in common from the get-go. So they got talking just about their night and general chit-chat and they found out that they'd been in the same club that night. And Joseph confided in Megan saying that he took a lot of drugs, he drank way too much and he was so anxious about going home. He didn't want his parents finding out or seeing him like this. His dad was an ex-police officer and was quite strict and quite militant. And earlier that night, Joseph got caught by police with a bag of cat and got it confiscated. Megan could see that Joseph was very anxious about going home and being the girl that she was, she had to help. So she gave Joseph her phone so he could call some friends and try and get somewhere to stay for the night. I don't know whether they weren't picking up or they just couldn't offer him a place to stay, but it fell through. So Megan offered Joseph to stay in her apartment that night so he could sober up and go home in the morning. Joseph's dad messaged him and asked where he's staying that night. Joseph just replied and said he's staying at a male friend's house. So they both left together around 4am to go to Megan's apartment and luckily there was a lot of CCTV cameras to capture their movements. They walked a short while up the street and then entered the apartment block and it's quite evident from CCTV footage that Megan's quite happy, she's quite comfortable in his presence 
and they entered the apartment together. Then only about an hour and a half later, Joseph leaves the apartment block without Megan around 5.54, then on his own walks out of her apartment block with her house keys in his hand. CCTV footage shows Joseph throwing Megan's keys in the courtyard of the apartment. He then carries on walking for about 15-20 minutes onto a busy road, the A500, he comes to a bridge and he just sits there. On this bridge, he decides to sit backwards, like with his legs hanging off the railings. And he sat there for a while until a car pulled up next to him just to check on his welfare. I'm not sure what was said between the passerby and Joseph, but they called the police, so I imagine they were quite concerned. And so were the police. They took him to Harplands Hospital and put him on the mental health ward. He was released later that day, but whilst this was going on, a neighbour found the keys that Joseph had thrown in the courtyard and they recognised them to be Megan's. When the neighbour found these keys, they were covered in blood, which is so alarming and rightly so, they were so concerned. They decided to take it upon themselves to investigate and check on Megan. They let themselves into the apartment to find Megan laying on the bed covered in blood and immediately they called the police. Police arrived and assessed the scene and it was horrific. They found Megan's body naked on the bed with strangulation marks and nine stab wounds to the back. This of course was an evident murder scene and police started their investigation straight away. However, it didn't take them long to find their prime suspect, Joseph Trevor. Police traced all the CCTV from the night before and this is where they see Joseph Trevor entering the apartment, leaving and throwing the keys. They also see that Joseph Trevor looked at his hands on one of the CCTV footage and they were covered in blood. They immediately went to his home and brought him in for questioning. Just quickly before I carry on, I want to give a background on Joseph Trevor so you can get the full picture of this boy. Growing up, Joseph had a decent, supportive family. They were nice and they cared for him and seemingly he had no issues. At around 15, Joseph got arrested for sexually assaulting a 14 year old girl. They went to his school and arrested him immediately, but no charges were ever given to Joseph for this, and I'm not sure why or what happened. Even though he didn't get charged, of course word went around, and his friends, or people around him anyway, started calling him Pedo and Rolf Harris, which led to Joseph falling into a depression. In 2019, a year prior to the incident with Megan, Joseph tried to take his own life. He tried to do this by jumping off a bridge, but again, someone stopped him and checked on his welfare and managed to talk him down. So now you know a bit more about Joseph and his background, we'll continue with the timeline. So police have just arrested him at this point and he's denying the murder. I'm gonna add a timestamp if you want to skip forward, um, just cause I'm gonna tell you the version of events and it mentions things like the R word, and it's quite graphic. They entered Lauren's apartment together, as we know, and when they were in there, they just got talking and the subject of Joseph's past come up about how he raped the 14 year old girl. And Megan actually apologized for telling people at the time, which just infuriated Joseph. And apparently he just blacked out. And from here, he couldn't recall his memories. But from here, he raped Megan twice. He strangled her until she was unconscious and then went into the kitchen and stabbed Megan nine times in the back. Nine times is absolutely vile. Joseph completely denies this. He said that they had consensual sex, which police found hard to believe. They truly think that Megan offered Joseph a place to stay out of the goodness of her heart, that she had no sexual intentions. They believe that Joseph tried to initiate sex and she said no, which triggered him to attack her, which again is just so, it's disgusting. And I feel like this case actually infuriates me. After this, he decided to leave Megan's body and the apartment and we could see on the CCTV footage him walking off. And this is where he texts his friends saying that he'd done something bad, which is just the biggest understatement. If my friend had texted me after a night out saying she'd done something bad, I would never in a million years think that she'd gone out, murdered and raped someone. He's actually vile. I'm like smiling and laughing, but it's out of anger. Like this case just stresses me out. Because Joseph was claiming his innocence, the case had to go to trial but there's no way Joseph could stand up in court and have a leg to stand on, just due to the CCTV footage alone. But 10 months later, the trial took place and shortly after it started, this is where Joseph decided that he was actually going to plead guilty to two counts of rape and a murder. 
This would have been so horrific for Meghan's family. They would have to anticipate a trial for 10 whole months just to finally get there for him to plead guilty. He wouldn't even let them grieve in peace. He was sentenced on the 17th of February 2020 for 21 years and 65 days for the murder of Meghan Newton. He was also sentenced to eight years for the two counts of rape, but they were to run concurrently, so at the same time. Joseph has been placed on the sex offenders list indefinitely, and his sentence means that he could be up for parole when he's around 40. I personally believe that he should rot in jail. He should not be up for parole by 40. He should stay in jail for the rest of his life. By the age of 19, he's been accused and now charged of the rape of two girls. I just had to cover this case because she was 18 years old and what she done is so normalised. She just took a boy home because he needed a place to stay and that was the outcome. As girls, we have to be so careful. You think things like that will never happen to you and then you read cases like this and it becomes so real. That's the end of this case and I wanna thank you so much for watching. I do just wanna say that everything that I've found is on media sources and everything I'm saying, I do believe to be true. But you know what the internet's like with false information. But like I said, everything I'm saying, I do believe to be true. I'd really appreciate it if you support my channel by sharing, commenting, liking, subscribing, all that jazz. It honestly means so much. I can't even explain it. It honestly makes me so happy. After this case, I do just want to say take care. Be so careful. Be so safe. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.